Science textbook. I'm starting on page 6, and I'm going to read through page 9. Sometimes children try to dig holes that are deep enough to come out on the other side of the earth. But children are not the only ones who find this feat impossible. Even scientists with the most advanced equipment have dug or drilled holes only a few miles deep. Much of what scientists think about the inside of the earth comes from their observations of events near the earth's surface. Events such as volcanoes and earthquakes give scientists a glimpse of what lies hidden beneath the earth's surface. Layers of the Earth Geologists are scientists who study the structure, rocks, and minerals of the earth. They divide the inside of the earth into layers. Each layer has characteristics that are different from the other layers. The three main layers of the earth, from inside to outside, are the core, the mantle, and the crest. The core is the center of the earth. Scientists believe that the core is very hot and under extreme pressure. They think that the inner part of the core is a solid, dense sphere made mostly of iron. Scientists also believe that there is an outer part of the core that is liquid. The next layer located between the core and crest is the mantle. This part of the Earth's interior surrounds the core and makes up most of the Earth's mass. The mantle is made of hot rock. The great pressure in the mantle can cause the rock to flow very slowly over time. The outer layer of the Earth is the crest. This thin layer is only about 7 to 45 kilometers thick. The crest under the ocean is thinner than the crest under the continents. The Earth's crest appears to be made of many pieces rather than one solid sheet. These pieces, called plates, rest on top of the mantle. The slow flow of hot rock in the mantle seems to drag these plates along. The moving plates and their collisions result in earthquakes and also heat the rock in the crest until it melts. Melted rock underground is called magma. Magma collects in chambers and can flow toward the earth's surface through deep cracks in the crest. The magma that flows from an opening onto the surface is called lava surface of the earth. God spoke and the earth was created. Genesis 1, 9-10 tells us that God gathered the waters together to form dry land. This land probably included a foundation of rock covered by a thick layer of soil. Since the fall of mankind, the earth has been aging and the crest has been wearing away. This wearing away of the earth is called weathering. Weathering produces sediment or small bits of weathered rock. This sediment does not usually stay in one place, though. Wind and water often pick up the sediment and move it. The movement of sediment from one place to another is known as erosion. Sometimes the sediment settles at the bottom of bodies of water or in dunes. The flood that happened in Noah's time caused the entire crust of the earth to change. Some of the rocks and mountains were quickly worn away, by the moving water even as other new ones formed. As the floodwaters flowed off the continents into the ocean, they continued to wear away the land. This weathering and erosion caused many landforms such as canyons, mesas, and caverns to form. Today, weathering and erosion continue to wear away the surface of the earth. Pressures within the earth continue to expose magma, which cools to become rock. The new rock is pushed upward by earthquakes and volcanoes. God planned for the land to supply the food and shelter needed by plants, animals, and people. Part of God's plan for supplying these needs after the flood is the continuing formation of soil. Soil is the loose material on the surface of the earth in which plants might grow. Soil is made of bits of weathered rock and other materials. Some particles in soil are organic, meaning these particles were once part of living thing. Organic particles in the soil are called humus. Humus forms from decayed plants and animals. Soil forms in layers. Plants usually grow in the top layer of soil called topsoil. 
become moisture and humus in this fertile layer supply the nutrients that many plants need. The particles in each soil layer are larger as they get farther from the surface. The lower layers of soil are made mostly of pieces of rock. God has given us the job of caring for the earth. Part of this job is to use the soil wisely. We must be careful not to cause conditions in which soil and rocks erode too quickly. By being careful, we wisely use and manage the resources that God provides for us.